Hi, my name is Richard Scott. I'm with Size Supply, and I'm going to spend some time showing you how to peen and sharpen an Austrian style sai. We'll do it three different ways with a peening jig, a hammer and a wide anvil, a hammer and a narrow anvil. Then we'll take a whetstone and hone it sharp. And finally, we'll take some time and I'll show you how to do minor repairs on a damaged blade. And this is an Austrian scythe blade made of a high carbon steel, very good quality tool steel. It's quite tough, it's ductile, it's malleable, and it takes advantage of that malleability and that it can be drawn out very thin. And that is what peening is. It's a method of drawing the steel out to a thin edge and then you sharpen that thin edge with a whetstone. Let's talk about uh, the different styles of blades. Uh, there are basically three different kinds of blades. There's a grass blade, a ditch blade, and a bush blade. This is a grass blade. They, uh, they're mainly meant for cutting grass. Uh, they will cut light woody plants, but very light, maybe year-old saplings. They don't want to do it a lot. It's, uh, they're not tough enough for that. Uh, while I've got this up here, uh, let me explain some of the parts of the blade, because that's important to, to have that terminology. Uh, this all is blade. This is the cutting edge down along here. Uh, the rib in the back gives the blade strength. There's a web between the rib and the edge, the cutting edge. There's the tang for mounting the blade onto the snath. Then this section is the beard. This section is called the heel, the rounded part of the uh, tang. And the opposite end of the heel is the toe. And that's the same terminology on any of these blades. Uh, that's a grass blade. Then the other end of the spectrum is the bush blade which as you can see is quite a lot different. Now, basically it's the same shape. It's much deeper through the web. It's much thicker in the web. The bush blade is short and stocky and is made to cut woody plants, saplings. Uh, you can easily cut saplings as thick as my thumb. And in between the two blades, the grass and the, and, and the bush, is a ditch blade. And the ditch blade is uh, uh, kind of a combination. It's a grass blade, bush blade. It's, 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 it's a heavy grass blade. It's a very light bush blade. And it's, it mows grass very well, as well as a grass blade does. But it, uh, if you have an overgrown field that has heavy weeds in it, like milkweed, uh, uh, burdock, that sort of thing, uh, this blade will, is heavy enough, strong enough, to cut those heavy weeds and to cut light saplings, uh, say as thick as my little finger maybe three-eighths to a half an inch thick. One thing these have in common I'd like to point out is, uh, no pun intended, the stone point. Uh, uh, these vary a bit between blades and basically what it is is the, the steel comes together uh, at the very toe of the blade. The web, the cutting edge, and the rib. They roll together and the point is very thick. Uh, and this protects the blade against damage if you hit something uh, very hard, like an old dead branch or a stone or an iron stake in the ground. Uh, that'll take the blow without damage. So let's move on to uh, the different uh, pieces of equipment that uh, you'll have for peening. I've got here mounted uh, a wide-faced anvil, a narrow-faced, a cross-peen anvil, and a peen and jig, and I've made two holes to put the caps of the peen and jig in to keep them handy and, and uh, out of the way while I work. Any one of these items will do the job of peening. For the flat-faced anvil, you do need a cross-peen hammer. For the peening jig or for a narrow-faced anvil, all you really need is any 16-ounce flat-faced hammer. which leads us to stones. There are uh, you, several different kinds of stones. Uh, this uh, particular one is a man-made synthetic stone. It's uh, carborundum. Uh, it's very coarse. And the most common stone we use is called a bregenza. Uh, it's a quarried stone carved out of a ledge. Uh, it uh, is a medium grit and is it really it's a general purpose stone. It'll do everything you need. It's actually the only stone you need. A third stone is a Rossitec, 
which is also a quarried stone. It's a very fine stone. It's wonderful for finishing off your blade after the Bregenza. Not necessary, but it does hone a very fine edge on the blade. I'm going to start by showing you how to use the peening jig, which is basically a, a, a cylindrical anvil with a center post on it. The anvil fits into a hole on the peening lock, and you tap that in there gently with a hammer handle. You go around it and make sure it gets in there evenly. Uh, there are two caps that come with the anvil. Uh, there's a number one, which has a rounded bevel on the underside of it, and these are basically dies that shape the blade. The number two has a flat bevel on it, uh, one that's angled slightly, but it is flat. They're marked. Uh, the number one has a single groove around the, uh, the uh, shank of it. The uh, number two has a double groove around the shank, and you use them in that order. Uh, number one, and then follow it with the number two. Uh, you take the blade, and you lay it flat on the anvil, and it's very handy if you've cut the uh, peening log, shaped your peening log, sized it so that when you lay the blade flat on the anvil, the blade also can rest on your legs, on your knees, which is a very good idea to wear an apron. Just uh, make one out of an old piece of toweling is all you really need. Uh, but keep the blade flat on the anvil surface. You take the number one cap and you drop it over the center post. The blade lies lightly, the edge of the blade will be lightly pressed up against that center post. Set the beard in under the cap between it and the anvil, and then you lightly tap on the cap. And as you're tapping on the cap, you draw the blade slowly over the anvil. The, uh, the blows are gentle, you don't have to wail on this thing, you don't have to hurt it. And you move the blade through to the left about a sixteenth of an inch for every tap of the hammer. Now that works out to be about sixteen or twenty taps of the hammer for every inch of blade. And to get the rhythm of this sixteen or twenty taps to the inch, you can take the blade and the magic marker and tick off one inch marks along this blade. And then set it in there and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, up to sixteen, and time yourself sixteen to twenty taps to the inch. And choke up on the hammer. You don't need to grip it way down low. That just gives you a lot more leverage and you're apt to hit it way too hard. Don't be shy to choke up on it. It also helps balance that hammer a little better. If you get towards the middle of the grip, keep your arm loose. The action is in your wrist. Don't keep your forearm and elbow, or your forearm and wrist stiff. Uh, you won't get a good blow. It's a lot like driving a nail. Keep your wrist free. What you want to hear is a good solid thunk all the way down through. You got steel all the way down. That means the blade is flat. And if the blade gets cocked up, the toe is too high, you get that tinny sound. If the heel is too high, you get that tinny sound. But if it's flat, you've got a good solid thunk all the way down through. But if you take that hammer and hold it six or eight inches off the jig and let it drop by its, just by gravity, that is about how hard you should be hitting that cap. And for lighter blades like a grass blade, you may want to hit that with a little less force. Ditch blades that are, are hardened a little more than grass blades are, you may have to hit it a little harder. And also bush blades, you may have to hit a little harder because the blades are heat treated so they're a bit stronger for the stronger work that ditch and bush blades do. Now the number one cap, again, it's got a round, it's a rounded bevel on this. The die is shaped curved like it's U-shaped. 
and it leaves on your blade uh, a U-shaped indentation. And then you follow that up with a number two cap and it flattens that bulge of metal at the edge and gives you a completely different shape. And that, that shape is no longer U-shaped, it is flat. With, and it tapers back from the very edge to the web. So when you get up to the toe, you can continue to peen, but when you get to that stone point, you'll lose that solid sound. It'll get hollow, and if you keep going, the thickness will just push the blade out from underneath the cap, which is fine because you cannot peen the last half to three quarters of an inch of the blade anyway because of the stone point. So that's, that's peening with the first pass with the number one cap. The second pass with the number two is exactly the same. You set the blade lightly with the, the edge lightly up against the post. Drop the cap over it and start tapping again. Same, same strength in the blow, no harder. And again you draw the blade through about a sixteenth of an inch for each tap of the hammer. And you listen for that solid sound. You want to get away from that tinny sound. Now we're finishing up at the toe. And again, when you hear that hollow sound and you're up on the stone point, that's time to stop. And now we're going to uh, Take a whetstone and put a fine honed edge on the blade. And they're meant to be laid on the blade like this. If you put the stone so it lays on the rib and lays on the edge itself, that gives you just the right angle, the optimum angle to shape that edge with the stone. And rest the, uh, rest the blade on your knee and with the stone on the, on the rib and on the edge, just push it down and forward with light pressure. Then overlap the strokes as you move slowly down towards the toe. Roll that blade over and take the wire edge off. This is not the safest way to do it. It's a lot safer to do it if you hold that edge away from you and draw the stone back against the edge like this. And keep your fingers up in the middle part of the stone somewhere, as high as you can. And that, that just saves flesh, you know. Draw it back. And that should do it. Uh, wipe it gr off the grit again in the, in the moisture. The blades will rust. It is steel. And it's good to keep them dry. And it's good between different stones to get the grit off so you don't foul the, the lighter stone with grit. All right, now, uh, if you want to hone a really sharp edge on your blade, uh, it's handy to strop with, a, uh, with an aluminum rod. And this is about uh, 5 eighths, half inch diameter, and it's uh, about a foot long. And uh, hold the blade up like this, and stroke each side of the blade, front and back, front and back, down the length of the blade. And that removes any wire edge that might still be on there from the stone. And that really will put a very fine edge on your blade without any, taking any of the steel off. But barring that, if you take the blade and draw it slowly, lightly, across the grain, or the end grain of a piece of wood, peen and log is fine, and that will pull any wire edge off of there. And when you're done, you have got an extremely sharp edge that will, will, will mow grass and will stand up to some of the hard stuff that you may encounter as well. And this is a traditional way with a hammer and anvil to peen a blade. And you need a cross peen hammer to do that. Like the, uh, like the peen and jig, you hold the blade flat on the anvil. Now this anvil is, is wide face, about an inch and a half square, and it's got a crown to it. 
both directions and you uh, you use that crown to your advantage. Start with the blade flat on the top of that crown, use the cross peen of the hammer and you're going to strike in that narrow zone about an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths of an inch in from the edge. And as you strike it, the hammer is going to come down and go out. Now again, you can peen holding this blade either with the edge facing away from you like I have it now, or you can do it with the edge facing you. And I find this the easiest way. Uh, but keep the edge on the crown, tap easy, move the blade underneath the hammer as you go. Now you can do this in one continuous motion, or you can hold the blade still, take a few taps, one spot, move the blade, take a few more taps, move the blade, and this gets a bit tedious, but at first that may be the easiest way to do it. But if you strike it too hard or you strike too often in the same place, the blade will become too hard, it'll get brittle, and small cracks will form along the edge, run perpendicular from the edge and back into the web. Uh, you can repair that, but it's best not to get to that point. And you draw the steel out and kind of push it out. It's moldable, a lot like clay. Uh, and you, you draw in that right out towards the edge, making it very thin. And as you move this blade along, there are so many curves in this blade. It's curved this way across section. It's curved down its length. And it, you need to keep moving the blade and rotating it a little bit up and down so that that edge stays on the anvil and remains flat. And you get right out to the edge and, and you're done. And the nice thing about hammer and anvils, whether it's a wide hammer, wide anvil and a hammer, or the narrow one, is that you can draw this blade out thin enough that you don't have to put a stone on it when you're done. It's ready to go mow right now. If you hold the, uh, the blade in the light right, you can look down the edge and any places that aren't sharp will show a bright spot where the light reflects off a flat surface. If you see nothing looking down through there, you've got a sharp edge. And wherever you see a bright spot, uh, it's not sharp. You need to just quickly touch that up with a stone and uh, take it away. And then hold it again in the light, take a look, and you can see that it's gone or it's still there. There's another spot. You can touch that up with a stone. Uh, and uh, don't confuse that be with a bright line that's on the on the top of the of the blade. Is you you will have it as you as you stone this blade. You will put a bright line across the top of it, and that's good. That shows where you have have stoned. And in any places that are dark here, you want to touch those up with a stone as well. But if you look down right along the edge, you should see no reflection at all. Just you should see nothingness, then you've got something. And that is sharpening with a hammer and a wide anvil. And now we'll take a look at sharpening with a narrow anvil and a flat faced hammer. Now with a narrow faced anvil, you're going to do this just the opposite of the flat faced anvil. You're going to turn the blade upside down and strike it from the bottom and hit it with the flat of the hammer. And the thing I need to do before I start that is to clean up that edge. And I'll just take a stone, any stone, and just quickly run down through there. Because this is a recently manufactured blade and I want to get the any wire edge off of there, any debris out of the way. I uh, don't want to uh, force that into the blade as I'm peening. So, Again, blade goes on upside down. The very edge wants to ride right along the center line of that 
anvil. It's pretty narrow. It's hard to keep the blade on there. Uh, and But you do want to run that blade right where my fingernail is on the long center line of the anvil. And the thing to do is to, to rest your knuckles on the on the peening log, or maybe up against the side of the anvil as you grasp it. The same way, same sort of thing as you did with the uh, peening jig. Uh, and then you strike with the flat face of the hammer, and any flat faced hammer will do. And as you strike, you slowly move the blade to the left. And the trick is to keep it flat on here. Strike consistently, easy blows. And you want to try to stay in the center part of the anvil, right in here, as opposed to close to the corners. If you strike the anvil, you strike the blade with the out here on the corners, you put a kink in the blade. So you want to stay in here where the blade is fully supported as you go along. And as you move, you readjust, reposition your hand so that it's supported by the, the peening log. And then you can ride this rib right up against the inside of your knee at one point to help hold it in position. And then as you get beyond that, you ride the tang right on your leg. And you can move your leg right along with the blade. Really subtle movements. And you keep this up, bit by bit, all the way down to the toe. With a narrow anvil, we'll leave that blade a little bit of a hollow ground effect. Uh, where it, uh, Kind of like the peen and jig number one cap, uh, and if you, which is perfectly fine, doesn't hurt a thing. But if you don't like that, uh, and you've got a flat-faced anvil, and you'd rather have a flat blade, flat edge, then put it back on the flat-faced anvil and tap it lightly. Instead of pounding with the cross peen parallel to the edge, turn it slightly, about 15 to 20 degrees, and tap right at the edge. And you can get a great deal of pinch that way. Sharpen the blade pretty quickly and be right back out mowing again and having a good time. Another way to do it is use the flat of the hammer and just let that blade rest over the crown and uh, tap easy with the flat of the hammer, and that, that'll flatten that blade out. And like I say, it's not necessary uh, to do that, but if, if you, prefer a, you prefer a flat surface on the bottom, that's one way to do it. Okay, so you've uh, been out mowing, and you've cut something, or tried to cut something other than grass, and you've damaged your blade. It happens to all of us. It isn't much fun. We don't like it, but it can be repaired. The nice thing about these blades is quite often they won't break. They'll just bend back when they hit something that's too hard. And that's what's happened to this blade here. There's been a nick taken out of it right here on the beard. And then the, uh, the metal right at the beard here was so thin the steel rolled back in a curve like this. And we're going to take that out of there. Uh, the first thing to do is, is to clean that up with a file and take those rolled up damaged edges away. And you can do that, lay that blade on your knee. And don't be shy with the file. It doesn't sound awful good, but clean some of that up. And it's easier often on a flat faced anvil to do this work. Uh, you can do it on a pin and jig, you can do it with a narrow faced anvil, but the flat faced anvil I find is a little bit easier. Uh, I'm just pounding that back in shape a bit and I'm going to work a little bit at it on the back side. I'm just I'm not hitting this hard enough to peen it and I'm not trying to peen it. I'm just trying to straighten it out and see how much of that I can save. 
Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape. Been wrong before. I want to get the wire edge and the burr off in there. And so I'm going to take my Turk and Wetson stone and clean that up. And just going over the back, try to keep that flat, same contour as the back of the blade. And then turn it over and do the same sort of thing from the front. And that's, that's pretty much taking care of that. And if you want to kind of joint this, you can run the flat of that blade and hit the high spots and bring them down. And now you can take your cross peen hammer on that anvil and very easily tap the metal out into that divot. And as you do that, tap at the corners, tap behind it a bit, and you're going to push that metal right into that hole and fill it. And you keep going until that hole falls right off the edge. And that is that. And that's the same process even for a large break like in this bush blade. And you do the same thing. You just file that rascal back and join it with a stone and then use the cross peen of the hammer to draw the metal out to fill in any void that's still there. So just to wrap up what we've done, we've learned to peen with a jig, hammer and anvil, sharpen a blade with a stone, and how to do a few minor repairs. And just like to share a few points with you before we end. Watch the blade. As Tresema says in the side book about mowing, the grass will teach you, the blade will teach you as you peen. Have an image in your mind of what the blade should look like when you're finished. Be comfortable, get a good chair, make sure the peening log is at the right height so that when you rest the blade on the anvil it also lays on your legs for support. Have good tools, make sure to keep them clean, take care of them, keep them in good shape. Reread the chapters in the side book about peening and sharpening. And review this video to track your progress. And from there on, you know, as Yogi Berra might say, you know, 90% of mowing is sharpening. The other half is cutting the grass.